tonight on a sparkling night in New York City. And as the Mets get set to open a homestand at City Field, who's in town? Well, the guys who used to play in New York. The Dodgers are here, first place team in the National League West. Justin Turner, the former Met, having a fantastic season as the Dodgers and Jimmy Rollins are riding high in the NL West and they come in for their only visit at City Field. Have a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field as the Mets play the Los Angeles Dodgers, the first of a four game series. I'm Gary Cohen, Ron Darling alongside Keith Hernandez will be with us in just a moment as the Mets open a four game series against the Dodgers coming from Washington where the Mets suffered as, as excruciating a loss as they've had all year giving up three runs in the bottom of the eighth and falling to the Nats yesterday four to three and now having to rebound coming off that loss. You know Gary I've been in losses like that before when you're in July they really affect you for about an hour. If you're feeble minded you can find a reason to lose every single day. What you have to do is wipe the pit paper clean and move on. Well the task gets more difficult for the Mets tonight as they take on the pitcher who's been the best in baseball over the last half decade. That's Clayton Kershaw. The lefties warming up in the bullpen and Keith is out there watching. Keith. Oh, well Gare uh, I have to tell you the, it's a kind of a treat for me. What it struck me about his routine which is supposed to be very regimented his outfield tossing. He started out in uh, left center field with the catcher in center field and backed up started out around a pitching distance and backed up incrementally 10 yards 15 yards at a time five tosses but every toss he went to 100 yards I was shocked at that but he was throwing like an outfielder throwing to a cutoff man he was really airing it out then he came back in 10 yards incrementally till he got to the wind up the, the, the distance to home plate for a hitter and he took wind ups and threw to the catcher as if he was on the mound then he came back in here and started his tosses and really predominantly what I saw in his warm-ups, he's basically thrown 75% of his pitches from stretch and the wind-up, fastballs. He's sprinkled in some change-ups. Uh, he's worked on his in groupings of like 10 pitches on his curveball. First time he went through the curveball, it was the hard one. Then he went back to his fastball, worked on his change-up. And then it, was a, then it was a slow curve he worked back to. But what I noticed already from him, it'd be difficult for a left-hand hitter, is that he's got a boring fastball that runs in on left-hand hitters. And when he started throwing his fastball, it wasn't soft tossing from the get-go. He was throwing like the game was on, and the ball running in, and he kept everything at the knees. In the beginning, his curveball was in the dirt. He lifted his elevation a little bit. He found his range. It was really, really fascinating to watch. Left-hand hitters are going to have their hands full. Not get off to a great start this year coming off his MVP last year but the last 10 starts he has really kicked it in gear. What's been the difference. Well the difference is is that his fastball command has been great. I think he came out of the blocks last season. He was unbelievable Gary the entire season even though he missed April. But this year he came out a little slow. Remember he had some misgivings uh, misdoings in October last season. Once he's got over that though he's back to the Kershaw you know striking out a lot of people putting up zeros. Mets will have Bartolo Colon on the mound to face Kershaw tonight and the most recent returns for the 42 year old have not been good. Well he's coming off his worst start in St. Louis but he's got Anthony Wrecker catching him as ERA is almost two runs less with Wrecker than it is with anyone else. Hopefully that familiarity will get Cologne going again. So the Mets and Dodgers open a four game series at City Field trying to see what they can do against Kershaw tonight. Mets and Dodgers all the action coming up on SNY.
Five hour energy shots. Have you tried the great tasting five hour energy lately? By Land Rover above and beyond. By Orkin pest control down to a science. By Hyundai to get in your comfort zone with the most advanced Elantra yet. Visit your Hyundai dealer today. By Geico over 75 years of savings and service. And by Stuff Up, the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the New York Mets. Get to City Field this Saturday night. The Mets play the Dodgers. Stay after the game for a special post-game concert featuring Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. Heart, the post-game concert, is included in the price of your ticket, and it's all presented by Pepsi. Purchase tickets online at Mets.com slash concerts. There's your data strong fan of the game brought to you by T-Mobile. I didn't know that Mickey Mouse was in the Data Strong fan Very photo nice. library. Very nice. There are your strikeout leaders in the National League. Clayton Kershaw, not only leading the National League, leading the major leagues in strikeouts so far this season. Presented by DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Enter promo code NYM for free entry. Kershaw's been on a roll. The Mets will try and break that up. Mets and Dodgers first pitch coming right up. Chuck Peterson leads off for the Dodgers against Bartolo Colon. It takes his sixth crack at his tenth win of the year. And Bart's first pitch of the night is taken for a strike and we're underway. Here's the Dodgers starting lineup tonight brought to you by Hyundai. No Howie Kendrick who has bad numbers against Colon in his career. So Kike Hernandez gets a start at second base. And Colon quickly ahead on Peterson 0-2. Well, it's no way of sugarcoating it. His last seven starts, he's one and five with a no decision. These are the Jeep numbers so far on the year. Two keys. If the ball is down and he's getting that called strike inside in the left handers, that's the key. And Peterson takes three pitches, three strikes, and he'll sit down, and that's how the game begins. Well, thank you, Bart, uh, for throwing it right on cue. Beautiful. That pitch starts right at the right knee of Peterson, bends right over that inside corner. Nice job by Wrecker catching that strike. And we'll take a look at your Lexus Metsy defense. And Mayberry, of course, gets to start in left field. Granderson in right. 
Duda, Flores, Tejada, Campbell on the infield, and Wrecker getting the start with Cologne. Cologne has good numbers, as I'm sure Ronnie explained to you earlier, with Bart with Bartolo. Here's Justin Turner, the former Met, and he takes ball one from Cologne. Turner having a marvelous year, hitting 322, 387 on base, 552 slugging. He has been a different ball player since changing coasts. Four years with the Mets, hit 265, two years with the Dodgers, hitting 332 in a Dodger uniform. Takes outside from Cologne, two and one. Well, it's a dream, as you see, Adrian Gonzalez, who grew up in the San Diego area. Justin Turner grew up outside, a couple hours outside of Los Angeles. McGuire, another Southern California kid. I mean, you grow up, you want to be in that Dodger blue at some point. Right now, the hitting coach for these Dodgers, who lead the National League in home runs, fourth in the league in runs scored. They sit atop the National League West, two and a half games on top of the Giants. They come from Atlanta where they won yesterday after dropping the first two games of that series. 2 2 coming to Turner, and he hits one to the second baseman. Flores on the backhand. And throws out Turner, two away. Such a difference watching Flores make backhand plays at second versus backhand plays yeah. at short. And he's obviously much more comfortable, Gary, on that right side of the infield at second base. And more range up the middle. We talked about this before. It gives you better defense up the middle. Now Adrian Gonzalez, who has great career numbers against Cologne, 9 for 21 with a couple of home runs. He's having a big year and has been killing it since the All-Star break. The six games since the break, Gonzalez hitting 417 with three home runs. So he has come out firing after a few days off. And you're talking about a guy, another guy that found a home uh, in, in Los Angeles. He went to Boston and was there for very short. Didn't have a good year with Boston. Came to the Dodgers and, ref and found his stroke. Now in his fourth year with L.A. in the fourth year of a seven-year, $154 million contract, and that has certainly paid off for LA. They've given a lot of money to a lot of players. Some of those contracts have paid off and some haven't. There's a call strike and it's one of two. Well, that guy could hit, couldn't he? Don Mattingly. A little bit. At the park early today. I had around a 20 minute conversation with Don and we were talking about hitting and I was all ears and wanted to hear what his philosophy was. Gonzalez rolls over one. Easy play for Flores and a good start for Cologne. Gave up four runs in the first inning in his last start. One, two, three in the first today. Mets face Kershaw when we come back.
He's been the best pitcher of his generation and he's on an incredible roll right now. Clayton Kershaw has struck out 27 and walked none in his last two starts. Here's your Kaiku Mets starting lineup. Mets putting as many right handed bats as possible in against Kershaw. One of the lefties in there is Granderson and Curtis takes a fastball for a strike. But well, see his numbers uh, Toyota numbers for Kershaw this year 5 and 0 oh against the Mets in his career 2 and 0 oh here at City Field. That's faced him three weeks ago in Los Angeles. He allowed just one run in seven innings. It was a no decision for him. Mets would win that game in the ninth and take two out of three against the Dodgers. That run he allowed against the Mets. That's the last run he allowed. 20 straight innings without allowing a run. Not quite the 43 and two thirds of his teammate Granky, but not bad. Granderson pops one foul, not a go out play. Ranky, by the way, he is not here. He was supposed to pitch tomorrow for the Dodgers. He will not. His wife is in labor, expecting their first child. There's some possibility Granky might pitch Saturday or Sunday, but that's very much up in the air, as are all the Dodger pitching plans for the rest of this series. That makes this Kershaw start that much more important from an LA perspective. Granderson rolls one to the right side. Kike Hernandez playing second base throws it out one away. We'll take a quick look at your Dodger defense. And that's always brought to you by Coors Light. There's the Jock Pedersen who slowed down, just took the, the world by storm. 20 home runs on the year. Jimmy Rollins, the former Philly and Met killer, is having a rough season at shortstop. And Grandal, my goodness, he's having a terrific season behind the plate. For those Dodgers. Here's the hottest net hitter right now. Ruben Tejada has a 10 game hitting streak going, hitting 333 over the 10 games. And he's got good numbers against Kershaw. He's 5 for 10 in his career against this great left hander. Kershaw has won the Cy Young three of the last four years. The only guy who got in his way was R.A. Dickey in 2012. And Kershaw finished second. <laughs> That's how dominant he's been. One and one to Tejada with Wilmer Flores on deck. You know, when I first wrote down his numbers, I always write down his statistics innings, pitch, hits, walks, runs, blah, 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 home runs, strikeouts. I wrote 131 innings pitched, 174 strikeouts. I thought it was a, a typo. <laughs> exactly. 12, 12 strikeouts per nine innings, by far the highest strikeout ratio of his career, and it's been enhanced in his last two starts. He has struck out 13 and 14 in his last two starts. And not walked a batter in either game. The last one came against the Nats on Saturday. Eight scoreless innings. You know, I saw Dwight strike out 16 in back to back games. You don't see it very often. But I talked about his slow start, and he has just been chugging along, getting better as the season goes along. Last 10 starts as a 1.36 ERA. Only five wins and three losses over that stretch, but that's not his fault. <laughs> Two and two to Tejada with Flores on deck. And Ruben hits one out to right, and Yasiel Puig is there. Two out. Keith talked with Ronnie on the uh, open about bouncing back from a loss like yesterday's, which was yeah. clearly the most disheartening loss the Mets have had all year. What about it, especially going up against a guy like Kershaw? Is there a carryover? I think there's more of a carryover, Gary, if you got blown out. In a rubber match, you know, 12 nothing. This was a hard fought game, a game they had. Parnell has been phenomenal. I thought Terry took the brunt of the, the fault, and I thought it was unnecessary. I wouldn't have pulled Parnell. He's been fantastic. Flores with a check swing roller right to the back for Gonzalez. And so Kershaw has a 1 2 3 opening inning to match Cologne. After one, no score.
a candidate for the MVP award. Hashtag SNY tweet. Of course, last year, Clay Kershaw won the MVP in the National League. Won 21 games, lost three with a 177 ERA and only 27 starts. Yeah. <laughs> Verlander did it a couple seasons before that. Andre Ethier leads off the second inning against Bartolo Colon. Ethier having himself a terrific year, hitting 284, 10 home runs, and he's been hot lately. So that when Carl Crawford, after almost three months on the disabled list, was activated from the DL this week, Don Mattingly said that Crawford would be a backup player and that Ethier would continue to play almost every day. Which is the opposite of what it used to be a few seasons ago. Dodgers have a very crowded outfield. Of course, they have Crawford and Scott Van Slyke, who plays against lefties. Well, it makes for a great bench and also a very, very high team salary. The Dodgers have the highest payroll in baseball for $215 million, and they may be taking on more payroll in the next week. Ethier hits one out to left, and Mayberry has it lined up. Because for all of their strengths, and the Dodgers have lots of those, they have huge question marks once you get past Grinky and Kershaw in their starting rotation as we look at the standings, and they are almost certainly to be in the market for pitching. I'd also include uh, Howell has been great, Jansen has been great. They could use a couple of uh, better guys to get to those two. Of course, the first domino fell today in the pitching sweepstakes. Scott Casimir traded from Oakland to Houston for a couple of minor leaguers. And then the first position player of note went as well today. Ramos Ramirez traded from Milwaukee to Pittsburgh. Pirates acted quickly. They lost Jordy Mercer, the shortstop, had to move Jung Ho Gong to short, needed the third baseman, traded for Ramirez. They'll pick up the last six million dollars of his contract. Who started his career in Pittsburgh, right? As a 19 year old. That was one of the guys, Ramirez, that I was hopeful the Mets would consider picking up for the final two months of the season of a solid bat. Rondahl swings through the fastball one and two. Well Sandy Alderson had extensive comments to reporters today about the trading deadline and he said we have the ability to take on a major contract. Whether the Mets will do that or not we'll see. Rondahl pops one up into shallow center field and the Barris running through the sunshine. That's the second out. Well, Cologne off to a much better start than he was last Saturday against the Cardinals, but he just couldn't find his rhythm at all early in the game. Question for you, Ron. Uh, Cologne struggling. Deep struggle for a pitcher. Yeah. Up against probably the great best pitcher in, in that's not baseball, the Nash, certainly the National League. He's got to be a little more focused, right, from the get go? He's a 213 game winner. You don't get 213 wins without figuring it out once in a while against some of the best. Weeg doesn't get all of it. Overcomes Lagaris to make the diving catch. That ball was fading fast, and Lagaris streaking across the outfield and making the play on Weeg. That was Shades of Lagaris 2014. Brand new model. No score in the second.
John Mayberry leads off the home second against Clayton Kershaw. Mayberry trying to snap an 0 for 14 stretch, hitting cleanup for just the second time this year. He has started every game the Mets have faced a lefty this season. But he has not succeeded against left handers, hitting just 185 against left handed pitching. However, Mayberry is the last player to walk against Clayton Kershaw. Walked in the first inning of that July 3rd start. Kershaw's gone 24 straight innings now without a walk since then. Well, if you're watching the game from the Mets dugout, Kershaw is trying to bully the right handed Mets hitters. He's just trying to jam them with every single pitch. It's fastballs, four seamers in, and then he's cutting it right on the belt on them. He just wants to dictate the at bats to these righties. The game hasn't changed. The pitcher establishes inside on hitters and gets hitters worried in. He's got him the rest of the day. And plus, he's got that herky jerky motion. He really hides the ball. This is with a curveball, and it's two and two to Mayberry. Kershaw has accomplished so much at such a young age. He's the same age as Jacob DeGrom, and he's won 105 games in his career. I mean, chew on that a little bit. 27 years old and should be just getting started. In the second year of a seven year, $215 million contract. And he strikes out Mayberry. First strike out of the night for Kershaw. Well, I mentioned here in the open when I was watching, this is the cutter that Ronnie's talking about. And you saw the back circle on the ball uh, the, uh, with the seam making this large circle. But the motion, go ahead, Ronnie. This is so deceptive for hitters. Watch the pause with his foot at the bottom. Pause. And then he goes. That little pause, it's what gets you off of seeing where that ball is coming from. No one else does it in the game. So as a hitter, when you approach a pitcher that has this herky jerk. Campbell hits it right at Puig. Ooh. Two out. You almost, Gary, you cannot, if you pay attention to the motion, and really you never you look at the motion, but you really are focusing with the point of release. But with a guy with a motion like Kershaw, that's so herky jerk jerky and lifts his short front shoulder and all of a sudden boom here comes the ball. You really have to eliminate his motion and really totally focus on point of release. Eliminate the motion. Lucas Duda hitting sixth in the order for the first time this year takes a strike. But what about the hesitation? Because that's got to throw your time. Well then you've got to make you got time to make an adjustment on that because it's early. So you just got to skip a beat with him, you know? Because that's what he's doing. He's skipping a beat. It's almost like you're relaxed until he starts to come at you after the pause. So you watch until after the pause relax. Now you get focused if you can. Kind of reminds me of um, remember Rob Nen, how he used to bounce that's his right. foot. He used and, to skip it across yeah. the mound. It, it seems as though it would be that kind of break in your timing. Just the ball's coming a little later than you expect. Duda over the last 29 games hitting 142. And a few better at bats in Washington, but the trend line has not been good. Well, Lucas and Lagaris were out uh, very early today having extra batting practice. And I want to let you folks know out there that I beat Gary to the ballpark today. <laughs> First time. <laughs> Well, you had plenty of time to rest up the last few days. Mm. You were raring and ready to go for this series. Well, I was given the heads up by the chief in the truck that I was going to be out in the out in the uh, the boondocks in right center field. <laughs> oh, right by him. 95 from Kershaw he unleashes one pass Duda for his second strikeout. Six up and six down for Kershaw. No score after two.
four for forty-eight dollar ticket order offered. Take advantage of four tickets for forty-eight dollars during this homestand through August second at City Field. Purchase tickets online at Mets.com/slash/degrom. Kike Hernandez leads off for the Dodgers in the third and takes a breaking ball from Cologne for ball one. Hernandez playing second base today is 26th start at five different positions. Very useful utility player for L.A. Well, kind of what Justin Turner was for the Dodgers except he's playing every day now. That's Howie Kendrick Get having a great off. season. Getting the day off today doesn't have good numbers against Cologne so Mattingly will sit him today have him back in there tomorrow against John Neese. Two and one to Hernandez, who started his career last year with the Astros and then got dealt to the Marlins. Already with his third team at age 23. Jimmy Rollins on deck, and then Clayton Kershaw against Cologne has gotten off to a fast start. Six up and six down. Oh, that's a nice little four game set. They're going to have their hands full, too. They're getting the four of the top. Pirate pitchers. Pedro Alvarez just homered off Doug Fister to put the Pirates up 2 0. It'll be interesting to see if the Pirates get a boost out of Aramis Ramirez. Last couple of months of his career, he intends to retire at the end of the season. His record takes that direct hit. It's a brotherhood, the home plate umpire and the catchers. They kind of feel their fill each other's pain. When they get nailed in the mask. Fellow masked men. <laughs> two two. Got him looking. Second strikeout for Cologne as Hernandez is retired. One away. He talked about the fastball down, the fastball that comes over the plate, starts off the plate, and comes over that outside corner. He's got it nailed so far. Nice They're to see. Contrast in starting pitchers tonight. North and south poles. It just goes to show we got overpowering stuff from Kershaw and then you've got a Dutch master out there. Negative but muted reaction to Jimmy Rollins in his first appearance at City Field in something other than a Phillies uniform as he pulls it foul. I mean there were a few boos and Jimmy was smiling at him but I thought there would be something a little more like a groundswell. Well he was laughing at Anthony Recker. I bet you Anthony Recker said something like oh boy they're still booing you Jimmy. 15 years in a Phillies uniform, not fearing well in his first year as a Dodger, hitting just 204. We're really struggling uh, from the left side of the plate on the interstate, 186. Only two active players have hit more home runs against the Mets than Jimmy Rollins, and those are his former teammates, Ryan Howard and Chase Utley. 30 home runs in his career against the Mets. Yeah, plenty of conversation. <laughs> Team to beat. Backed it up though, didn't he? Yes, he did with an oh. MVP in 2007. All those years when Jose Reyes was here as the shortstop for the Mets, there was a competition between the two to outdo each other. Yeah. Cologne working with Anthony Record today, and that's been a good formula. He's got a far better ERA with Record behind the plate than he's had with any of the other med catchers this year. And I'm not sure that's something you can explain, Ronnie. No, can you? It, it's it's hard to explain, especially since I I was surprised how many innings Record had caught him. Rollins gets a hold of one to deep right center, taking a look Lagaris, and that ball is out of here. Mm. Jimmy Rollins makes his return to City Field with a home run, his ninth of the year. No, Rollins has had a habit of doing this. Gets a negative response from the flushing crowd and comes through his 31st career home run against the Mets, and the Dodgers have a one nothing lead. Chief, the first pitch that Cologne has thrown up in the strike zone. Tried to come inside, tried to paint that inside corner, and it bled right over the middle and up in the zone. Clay Kershaw takes a strike. Wants to come in. Oh boy. There you go, Ron. Bleeds right out up. A little above the belt. Right down the pipe. And paid the fiddler. Really, go ahead. 
Ligaris was shallow. He didn't even he really was, run after yeah, that. Yeah, he realized right away. That was well struck. Kershaw slaps one through the hole, and he's got a base hit. Seventh hit of the year for Clayton Kershaw. So after Colon had retired the first seven, now he gives up a home run, a single to the eight and nine hitters. Well, Bart's given up more than a few of those. He knows when they're tagged. Fifteenth home run he's allowed this year. Did not allow a home run in that last start at St. Louis, but got battered for seven runs and eight hits and didn't have any control either. He walked a couple in the first inning. That was the first telltale sign that he was off his game. It seemed like the All Star break. He didn't pitch for what ten days plus, and playing behind Kershaw, as you always should with a pitcher. Here's Jock Peterson who struck out looking his first time up. Double play ball back to Cologne on target, and they turn two. That was Campbell in the middle of the double play. Playing in the shift. The third baseman Campbell covering at second. 1 5 3 on the double play. Rollins home run puts the Dodgers in front. Audi A3 sedan. Well, Keith, really, I'm reiterating what you gave us before the game. Uh, that great fastball with great control, especially down. He's trying to take away the will of the right-handed hitters with that cutter and slider. He'll throw out the lefties when he's behind also. And the curveball, to me, is the best left-handed curveball in baseball. But my question for you, okay, your MVP or 79, how do you face this best pitcher of his generation? Harris flies one out to Ethier, one pitch and one out for Kershaw in the third. Well, it really doesn't matter what year. It also depends on a pitcher like this. All great pitchers have great secondary pitches, have great command. So, and the good ones don't have a pattern. So, a pitcher like Kershaw would give me trouble because of his herky jerky motion. So, my approach would be I'm not going to try to hit a home run off of him. I'm going up the middle off of him, see the ball out of his hand. And and work uh, in both work into both gaps, and not and if I get ahead, okay, two and zero, oh, maybe I can depending on the on the situation in the game. 
I can look for something maybe in in the hopes that I get it. And if I don't get it, I can take it. I'm two and one. So what? Another factor. Am I red hot going into this game or am I in a slump? If I'm in a slump, I am really going up the middle and not trying to hit anything even in the gaps. I'm going to be short and try to hope I can get a situation where a single can beat them. If I'm red hot, I'm going to be a little more. Uh, I might be a little more of a, a little more of a gambler with that curveball that's going to start behind you and has such great break yeah. on it. Are you going to try and lay off that pitch or are you going to hope that he hangs one and look for it. I'm going to hope that he throws it because it's going to break away and down into more. I like it if I'm going to go up the middle. I'm going to keep my shoulder in Carlton had probably everybody says it was a slider. But to me I always thought of it in terms of of, of, of a curveball and it always they were going to throw it down and away. So my point being is when you're going up the middle against a lefty lefty for my in my case I'm going to take inside. I want the ball middle in away so that I can hit off, off a fastball and adjust to the curveball. Mm. It's still going to be work with a guy like this. So you're telling me that you're trying to eliminate half the plate with him because you're not going to be able to hit that good fastball in if it's on the corner. Three quarters of the plate against a left hander. I have, uh, the good ones that throw hard. Yeah. I felt I could cover. I either look three quarters in or three quarters away and I have to take the other quarter. I, I, I couldn't cover the, the whole entire plate. Three two to record. And he takes strike three call borderline pitch. Ben May the rookie home plate on fire punches out record for the second out. And it is borderline. I thought it was low. I don't ever think of umpires as making up calls anymore, but there was a curveball a couple pitches before the one two count that he thought was a strike and Kershaw kind of stared in at Ben May. Maybe that helped him with that call. Who knows? Malone had a hit in his last start against the Cardinals. He now has five hits this year. One shy of his career high. He had six one year with the Expos. That one right at Rollins takes the bat with him as Rollins throws him out. Three perfect innings for Clayton Kershaw. He's got a one nothing lead after three. Mets starting a 10 game homestand tonight. And they have certainly run up some big numbers at home, averaging more than a run per game more at home than on the road. Pitching better at home. 
18 games over 500 at home. Four with the Dodgers, three with the Padres, three with the Nationals on this homestand that'll take the Mets into August. Bartolo Colon gave up a home run to Jimmy Rollins in the third. And the way Kershaw looks early in this game, it certainly would behoove Mr. Colon not to give up anything else. The way he looked warming up in the bullpen. 23 consecutive scoreless innings now for Kershaw. Justin Turner leads off of the fourth for LA and takes just off the plate. Turner, Gonzalez, and Ethier, two, three, and four in the Dodgers batting line. You see Wrecker's reaction when he caught that pitch? He was like deflated. I mean, that's the same pitch he felt that it was called on him. Chopper, big hop for Tejada. And he throws out Turner one away. It's going to be interesting to see Gonzalez. I think he's one of the smartest hitters in all of baseball. He made an out his first time up on a little changeup from Cologne. He's one of the best, I think, at sitting on pitches if you tend to want to pitch him just one way. And you can't say that this is a real powerful shift, but the fact that you, he doesn't run well, you correctly have Flores out in the outfield, and you have the shortstop up the middle. I can li live with these kind of shifts. I'm not a big fan of these uh, extravagant extreme shifts. And now after the, the first pitch they move to hot over to the right side. So. But he's still more up the middle. You know what my feeling is a hitter like Gonzalez. If you put a shift on like this you're the hitter Gary you can see it. You can also see as a hitter that huge gap between Murphy. I mean Campbell and Tejada. If it's a base hit, it's going to beat you. He's got a good enough back control to get a base hit to that side of the infield. I will say this, having watched Gonzalez over the years, it's a lot of fly balls to left field. He hits a lot of home runs to left yes. field. Never really seen him hit ground balls to that side of the field. I'm sure that's what the Mets charts say too. He lines one to center field, and that's in for a base hit. Third hit for the Dodgers against Cologne. A one out single. I think that's the. I think that's that running sinking fastball that he was right on. Just the good hitters they always seem to find a hole, don't they? Hit line drives. That's usually what ends up happening more Thank often you. than not. Yep. One out and one on. Here's Andre Ethier, who fly to left his first time up. Ethier now in his tenth year with the Dodgers. Didn't start out in their organization. He was drafted by Oakland and he traded to the Dodgers before he got to the big leagues. Browns went back to Cologne. He'll start another one. This time Tejada with the turn for the one-six-three double play. That's two double plays started by Cologne to end each of the last two innings. He really feels his position well and he's always on target with his throws. Middle of the fourth, one nothing LA. And that's a one six three double play this time.
evening. Low 80s, low humidity. Couldn't ask for more. Curtis Granderson leads off. Mets might opt for a hit or something of that. Old. They've been uh, shut down by Kershaw over the first three innings. Nine up and nine down. Granderson grounded out to second base his first time up. It's been a rough year for Curtis against lefties, hitting 121 coming into the day against left handed pitchers. Expect a little bit more than that. Daniel Murphy, likewise, has really struggled against lefties this year. Murphy is sitting tonight. That can't be easy, Keith, with that little streak of sunlight. Uh, yeah, it's not. I think you can. I think you're okay, Gary. I think it's too far to the right. You know what used to bother me was old Candlestick. Was that Candlestick had the two center field. Um, Left center field lights, and they were up way high because that's why it was called candlestick. But they weren't in the gaps; they were kind of scrunched in towards center field. And I could see the right center field one in the corner of my eye, my right eye, looking at the picture. So I had to tilt my helmet a little bit, just slightly. So I, you know, and uh, just to get rid of that those lights, it, it bothered me. Well, it's the sunlight glinting off the windows of the, the building out in right center. It'll be better for a lefty pitcher than for a righty in terms of an advantage. It was kind of like when I was trying to hide from our director, Bill Webb, when I was trying to sneak a back in my smoking days in the dugout. Bill Webb was always on me with the camera. <laughs> Used to drive me nuts. Curveball pulled down to first, then the four time gold glover Gonzalez beats Granderson to the bag. One away. Nice cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Chris Coors Light. Well, we alluded to it earlier that the top two in the Dodgers rotation are the best one two combination in baseball, but the rest of their starters, that's been a bit of a problem. They lost Punjin Ryu for the season, they lost Brandon McCarthy for the season. Brad Anderson's been banged up from time to time, has a little bit of an Achilles problem right now. The Mets saw the curveball throwing Bull Singer. Right. Who won for them yesterday in Atlanta. <laughs> he had some interesting comments after the game yesterday. You see that? He said, um, people get on me for throwing too many curveballs. And then he smiled and said, but if they're not hitting it, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> That's his best pitch. <laughs> his only pitch. <laughs> To how to fly to right his first time up. Ruben's been playing pretty good lately. He's playing every day and in, oh, inspired. You know he's been getting some hits and uh, playing well in the field. And he and he sees Kershaw well for some reason. He's uh, had better at bats than most over his career. He still takes too too big a coat a cut. Excuse me. Kershaw and Greinke, lowest combined ERA for any teammates over three seasons since 1920. Wow. Ahead of Drysdale and Koufax. And those two went on uh, not strike. They held out. What year did they held out here? 65, I think. Mm. Out to center field. Peterson with plenty of room. Two out. Well, remember Koufax and Drysdale had the advantage of pitching in baseball's expansion era and particularly took advantage of the expansion Mets. <laughs> Combined they were 41 and 8 well, against the Mets. They had that big ballpark in Chavez Ravine. It was no inner fence when I was a kid growing up when Koufax and Drysdale were pitching. You had to hit it into the bleachers. Flores takes a strike. Dodger Stadium opened the same year that the Mets came into the league, 1962. Now the third oldest stadium in baseball, which is hard to believe. Yes, it is. When you go there and see how pristine it is, it's like Disneyland there. Now, how do you hit this curveball? You take this curveball. <laughs> that's too good. That's a good one. You just say, okay. I'm not. That's not a high. That's not a high percentage pitch to swing at. You know, you know that it's a hard curveball because the catcher moves more than the hitter to try to catch it. Strike three called. Flores caught looking. Fourth strikeout for Kershaw, who's perfect through four. Twelve up and twelve down. One nothing L.A.
innings. Jimmy Rollins in his 31st career home run against the Mets. And that's the only run of this game. Sunday on Jets Nation, training camp is less than a week away. Really? <laughs> Why some veterans are already feeling the heat. Plus, will Ryan Fitzpatrick bring out the best in Geno Smith? And why Chris Ivory may be on top for a huge season on an all new Jets Nation Sunday at 7 only on SNY. Why as a Jet fan was I not inspired by that promo? <laughs> as Monty Grandal leads off in the fifth inning, Grandal fly to center his first time up. Grandal came out of the University of Miami with Yonder Alonso. They both were. Drafted by the Reds, both traded to the Padres. Alonzo's having a big year in San Diego, and Grandal traded for Matt Kemp, having a big year with the Dodgers. Past the mound toward the middle, and Grandal's got a leadoff hit. Hit number four against Cologne. The sinker that just didn't get out enough. I just noticed the Dodgers. Road uniform. They have Dodgers written across. It used to always have Los Angeles, and you've got to have Los Angeles on that chest. Come on. They got two teams named Los Angeles. Maybe that's why they changed to the Dodgers. And one's actually in Los Angeles. Here's <laughs> Yasiel Puig, who was robbed of a hit by Lagares his first time up. I thought coming into this game, this would be the hitter that would give Cologne problems. Why? Because he loves to chase balls out of the strike zone, but Cologne is a strike thrower. Say he's been pulling too much, a middle in hitter. Can't handle the outside corner. Another double play possibility. Tejada with the turn, 4 6 3. Third straight inning, the Mets have turned two. Or is there ever a bad hop on the infields today? <laughs> this looks, I, looks like some infield practice. I would can seriously consider not wearing a cup. <laughs> Here's Hernandez. That was Hernandez. <laughs> K.K. Hernandez took a call third strike his first time up. Line past the mound, but Flores had not played perfectly. And the side retired. Five pitch inning for Cologne. Halfway through, one nothing Dodgers.
second most games for the Mets. John Franco has the record. Hmm. I think I know this one. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. I believe it's a starting pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all you need to know. Yeah. It's John Mayberry <laughs> leading off the home fifth. Mayberry struck out his first time up. And a check swing. Five footer. Brian Dahl throws him out. One pitch and one retired for Kershaw, who's now set down the first 13. And been absolutely dominant in doing so. Second batter in the Mets order. Flores with the other one that had was tied up inside on a check swing. Like I said before, he is against the right-handed hitters, almost being like a bully to these hitters inside. And now they're starting to react and saying, boy, he's throwing all these first pitch strikes. Let's try to get out there and hit that first pitch. And now he's giving up some easy outs. Four one pitch outs for Kershaw already. He got one from Campbell his first time up. He flied out to right. This time Aaron takes a strike. There's that fastball on the knees. Ball falls in for a strike. 0 oh 2. I, I just, your approach on Kershaw is if you get a fastball, you can't take it. You don't want to hit the hammer. So interesting to watch him. If he is, misses a pitch, he looks off to the dugout or the side like, I can't believe I just missed with that much. Okay, here we go. Regroup. Let's get back to being he Kershaw. Let's tap his chest and said, My bad. Sitting <laughs> on an 0 2 pitch. Oh. And an off speed pitch gets away from Grandal. The throw to first and a pick by Gonzalez, and he got him. What a tremendous pickup by Adrian Gonzalez. We'll see if the Mets challenge the call. It was very close, but that's a great scoop by a Gold Glow first baseman. They're going to hustle up here. This is a close play. Beautiful pick. Oh. Tie base. He got it. Looks safe. Yeah, he's going to be safe. Are uh, the Mets not challenging? Looks to me like the Mets are not challenging. Wow. Even though it looked on that last angle as though Campbell was safe. Well, it was worth challenging. I mean, to me, it's worth challenging. Wow. Close to me, that was bang bang. But so it goes to the fifth strikeout for Kershaw on a 2 3 put out, and a terrific save by Gonzalez to keep the perfect game intact. And a call strike to Duda, nothing in one. It was a pretty good play by Grandal, too. That ball hit right before the plate. He got it with his right shoulder. The funny thing is, is uh, not the funny thing is, the in between hop on the throw. It, 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 uh, Gonzalez couldn't get a good stretch forward because he had to play the long hop. Mm -hmm. He almost had to sit back on his haunches, kind of play, yes, right? Yes. Well, he's the defending Gold Glove first baseman for a reason. Got good hands. Well, that's the closest the Mets have come to a base runner tonight. I have to say, here comes the big hook. He could throw on the slider away in the dirt. And the curveball fouled off. I should, no, Ron, I should defer to your judgment. <laughs> I'm just thinking ahead, dreaming of if I had this stuff, what I would use it, how I could use it. 32 strikeouts in his last 22 innings, no walks. And he gets Duda with the curveball. Six strikeouts for Kershaw in five perfect innings. 15 up, 15 down. This is the closest the Mets have come to getting a base runner. Was he safe? Awfully close. Mets chose not to challenge. Still 1 0 Dodgers.
There's your People's United Bank starting pitchers tonight. Perfection from Kershaw through the first five. Colon almost as good, but gave up a Jimmy Rollins home run, and Rollins will lead off the sixth inning against Colon. He's thrown only 48 pitches to get through five innings. Rollins' home run was his ninth of the year and his 31st career against the Mets. Wanted to come in and it bled out, up and out over the plate, and we've seen Jimmy Rollins do that more than a few times. 30 home runs against the Mets as, the, as a Philly, and now one as a Dodger. He's going to even buy a hit left handed and hits one over the wall. Kershaw on deck, and then Jock Peterson for Cologne in the sixth. Caught by Wrecker one and two. Maybe he was trying to carry him that ball over to Kershaw and maybe get him in the ankle or something. Might be their best chance. <laughs> Little dribbler. Wrecker out to get it. And hurries the throw to Duda to get Rollins one away. So each catcher's had one of those plays to make tonight. Nice footwork by Lucas over at first. Now Kershaw, who had a base hit through the hole on the left his first time up. Would you consider putting him on and making him run the bases? Tire him out that way? He's a pretty good hitter. He's got a game where he won one nothing, I think, on opening day and hit a ball out of the ballpark. That was the only run scored. Kershaw for the first no hitter of his career last year. A 15 strikeout no hitter against the Rockies. And that no hitter, he was perfect for the first six innings in that game. The error by the shortstop, Hanley Ramirez. I yeah, think that he, might have ended that. There were no walks. Yeah. There's a throwing error that broke up the perfect game. Two to Kershaw. Cologne sells one away. Two and two. Oh, a little squeezage right there. Well, Cologne not happy at all. No. He's not happy because he's seen from the other side that. It feels as though Kershaw is getting every close pitch on Correct. the He's gotten a couple close ones, borderline knees, and he didn't get that one. Well, and it's a pitcher up too. Yeah. He really stared into Ben May, the young home plate umpire. See what he gets on three and two. And he gets the call on the inside corner that time for his third strikeout of the night. Two out and nobody on. Let's check in with the studio. Kareth Burke has a game break brought to you by Honda. Some help from the Pirates over the weekend. With the Nationals holding a three game lead over the Mets. Here's Jock Peterson with two out and nobody on. Peterson has taken a call third strike and had a comebacker into a double play. It's been a rough go for Peterson, the young rookie of the year candidate. 20 home runs, but he has really cooled down the last month. He is an all or nothing hitter, and you can see by that swing right there. And he had such a great first half. And he's really tape, tapered off. Lots of swings and misses, misses in and out of the strike zone. So it's not so easy. 
was interested in the profile on Peterson in the Times yesterday, talking about how he never hit a home run till his junior year in high school, retooled his swing, and now he's got the longest average home run distance in the majors. Average home run 431 feet. Yeah. Well, all or nothing. Had a terrific year at Albuquerque. 30 30 player. Oh, you know what? We try to know. do. Yep. Along ahead of him, one and two. Well, you can see it because of the swing right there. One, two doesn't change the swing at all. It's the same swing. He was lucky enough to have a coach who showed him a lot of old film about power hitters, and this is how they accomplished hitting the ball out of the ballpark, and he copied a lot of those swings. Incorporated in, into his own. So we put on a show during his home run derby appearance. And he got nicked by that pitch, I think. Home plate umpire Ben May says no. And this is a call that Don Mattingly can challenge, so he's going to have his replay coordinator take a look. It sounded from here as though there was some contact. Well, it sounded like a double hit. It, it hit his pant leg and then caught by Wrecker. And it's on the phone, Tim Wallet, the former Montreal. I remember him more as an expo, Ronnie. Yeah, third baseman. Well, he also turned into it. Well, well they're going to challenge. I don't know whether you can tell definitively from that, can you? Bigger thing is, is that he, you know, he just didn't turn out of the way. He kind of turned his back towards it, and just, you know, this is not what the rule was made for. I mean, if it was, this is just a shame. I mean, it could it be? Got a perfect game going. You got a one nothing game going. Two pitchers doing their thing. And if you're Peterson, you've got 20 home runs. Why not stay in there? The two out and nobody on. You know what I find interesting about the replay rules is that the the replay officials who are down in the bunker in Manhattan Gary Cedarstrom's crew Bill Miller's yeah. crew they'll be looking at the video but they're not allowed to listen to audio. That's interesting. And this is a case where audio might actually prove the Dodgers case but they're not allowed to listen to the audio as part of their review. Just like the close play at first base when you can hear the foot on the bag. Let's listen to it ourselves though. It's, it's live. It sounded to me as though there yeah. was a sound before the ball hit Wrecker's mid. Play well, review what I do by what Mazda I, driving matters. What I can't stand about these real close calls is that they sit there and they wring their hands. It's just way too long. Look at it this way, guys. No one gets in the box and has a ball thrown inside and fakes like the ball hit him. No one does that. Your first reaction is, is the reaction that you got hit with the ball. Everyone does that since the beginning of time. That being said. They're there forever. I think they're going to lose the challenge. I, thought, I don't think there's enough evidence here to overturn the call. Well, again, I come back to if you have to split hair so much that it takes this long, there's yep. got to be a time limit at which point you say, pull off the jam, the call stands. And while Cologne throwing in some warm up pitches, which is the smart thing to do. Come on, guys. Snap it. Snappy Tom. Not the. It, it can't be the intention of the rule. It just. There we go. You got. You got a game going on here. Let's go. And they're going to set up the first base. So the Dodgers win the challenge. Peterson, judge to have been hit by the pitch, and the Dodgers have a two-out base runner. Five minutes and you get to light up a green box. Very nice. And you know this is always fun. This annoys me too. They announced the time of the review at two minutes and 17 seconds, but that doesn't take in all the time that the Dodgers waited and the time for the umpires to run off the field and put on the headsets. It wasn't two minutes and 17 have, seconds. It was five minutes. I have to shave again after that delay. At least be honest about it. Here's Justin Turner, who's been up twice and grounded out both times. Peterson at first. He's only stolen two bases this year after 30 in the minor leagues last. Year. Really? He caught six times. And it was interesting reading Don Mattingly's comments about that. He said Peterson stole on bases in the minors by getting walking leads, and that just won't fly here. Mm -hmm. Pitchers are just so much better at controlling the running game. So they've really shut him down as far as stealing bases. 
Interesting. He's got a guard on his left hand that covers the thumb. That guys that slide head first, that kind of protects your thumb from uh, hitting against the bag and maybe breaking your thumb. Sprain your wrist, keeps your yeah, wrist from getting you sprained. What, there's a splint in there? Almost? No, he's bending. He's bending his wrist. Turner gets under one to left, playable for Mayberry. And that retires the side. So a hit batsman after a long delay. One left. Kershaw goes back to the mound, trying to stay perfect. One nothing, Dodgers. Eight days to go till the deadline. Scott Casimir goes from the A's to the Astros. Aramis Ramirez from the Brewers to the Pirates, where he began. Pedro Alvarez with a two run homer. Francisco Liriano just gave up his first hit. Two nothing Pirates over the Nats in the fifth. Alvarez has been under a lot of heat, uh, by the way, by his uh, lack of defense at first base, a, a position he's changed, and he hasn't been producing offensively. And they've got Travis Ishikawa yeah. now, who filled in the other day and had a big. Day. Here's Juan Lagares leading off in the home sixth against Kershaw, who has yet to allow a base runner. Lagares flied out on the first pitch he saw in the third. Last three starts, no walks, 33 strikeouts. 14 in his last start against the Nationals. All divisible by 11. Ooh. Curveball finds the outside corner, and it's 0 2. See, he drops the off speed curve here. It's a 12 to 6, more or less, but on the outside corner. Beautiful to a right hand hitter now coming back in. That's textbook. Anthony Recker on deck, then Bartolo Colon. No action in the Mets bullpen. Bottom of the sixth inning. Colon's only throwing 65 pitches, so Mets aren't even thinking about a pinch hitter at this point. And Lagares goes down swinging. Seven strikeouts for Kershaw. One out of the sixth. It's that cutter again, Keith, that comes down and in. Puts a little more on it. It's almost looking like a slider. So Kershaw has struck out the last three batters. And now he'll face Wrecker, who took a call third strike that he objected to his first time up. Well, this is one of the hitters Kershaw has to be careful of because if Anthony runs into one he's got the power to hit it out with one swing takes that home run hack at the fastball nothing in one this is record second starts is coming back from a five week stint in the minor leagues one that he didn't understand and really did a lot of other people he had 22 hits seven of them were home runs he hits one toward the middle of the diamond and Kike Hernandez is right there 17 up and 17 down for Kershaw. Two out. 
There has not yet been a hard hit ball. A Colognes was the hardest hit ball. He grounded out to shortstop. Wouldn't it be funny if he got the first hit? Can you imagine? You know, the Dodgers have a pitcher in their bullpen named Chin Wei Sao. In 2003, Sao was pitching for the Colorado Rockies and had a sixth inning double against Steve Traxel that was the only hit in Traxel's one hit shutout. So maybe Cologne in the sixth inning could pull a Chin Wei Sao. Traxel actually had two one hitters that year. He had one against the Angels, broken up by David Eckstein. Nothing and two to Bart. Gets a cheer because the helmet came falling off. <laughs> Strike three called. And Kershaw is perfect through six. Eight strikeouts for Clayton Kershaw. Starting to get awfully interesting here at City Field. Max, Wise and the Mets have teamed up to give fans a chance to win amazing prizes like free Wise snacks, Mets experiences, and more. Play now at windupandwin.com. Answering your Verizon trivia question, second most games pitched by the Mets. I think it's Seaver, isn't it? No. Oh, that makes sense. Seattle passed him by. Well, when you throw 120 a year, that's <laughs> what happens. Did they have 93 yeah, one did. year? He did. Remember how silly the Yankees when they got them and they <laughs> moaned and groaned the Mets for over they overworked them. Well then don't 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 trade for them or don't no, pick them up. They signed him as a free agent. Please. <laughs> silly. Bartolo Colon faces the heart of the Dodger batting order in the seventh. Gonzalez Ethier and Grandal. Bart has pitched an awfully good game in his own right tonight. It's generated three double plays, but he gave up the Rollins home run in the third, and right now that's enough the way Kershaw has gone 18 up and 18 down. Gonzalez is grounded out and single, and he takes the off speed pitch for ball one. Finishes the fact that he's been able to turn around what has been a pretty difficult stretch for him tonight against a good team. The 
his last five starts coming into this one. 0 and 4, 6.18. Well, you and I were talking before the game, and I thought he would have a good game only because he would be more on his everyday rest. Um, I think for Cologne, he just needs to pitch every fifth day. Uh, that that would just help his control. He can't go six, seven, eight days in between starts. Just can't do it at 42. And you know what my feeling is? Hooked down the line by Gonzalez, and that'll go foul. I think every pitcher needs to go on every fifth day. It's just so hard. You add that six day, it's just too difficult. I don't think the sixth day is as big a problem as the seventh, eighth, ninth, Not and yet. tenth days, which is what a bunch of the Mets pitchers had coming out of the All Star break. And even, I, even though he's 42, he's a workhorse. I mean, he led a team in innings last year. That's that's the kind of pitcher he is. Kershaw. They're staying as away good, from him now. As good as he is, he spends a lot of time alone in the dugout. That's hooked into right and center, a base hit for Gonzalez. So Adrian Gonzalez, who has been raking since the All Star break, has his second hit of the night. Well, I think of all the starting five, uh, six for the Mets, out of the strike zone, but stays in. That's just good hitting. I think the six man rotation has affected Harvey more than anybody. I mean, he's, last two starts, he's gotten off to. He's really had to find the range in the first three innings. Well, he'll pitch I, I, on regular rest on Saturday. We'll see if it makes any difference for him. The guy who's been helped out the most by the six man rotation, I think, is John Neese. It was Ethier who had to come back or into a double play his last time up. I mean, Neese has had such problems staying healthy over a full season through his career. This year, he has been able to stay in the Best of health and only gotten better. I think it's a combination. He, yes, he stayed healthy, and two, he has finally given in that he needs to use the outside corner and to throw some changeups, along with that cutter and curveball. A pitch tomorrow night. One and one to Ethier. Does Monty Grandal on deck? Has given up five hits. He hasn't walked about it tonight. He has hit one. Although it took a while to figure that out. Line to left, but right at Mayberry for the first down. So one out and one on. Now Grandal, who singled the center his last time up, one for two on the day. Rucker and Cologne have been going back and forth. A lot of shaking off about with between Cologne and Rucker. With that two seamer, two and one. Yasiel Puig waiting on deck. Biggest pitch of the night here, Keith. For Cologne. Well, the one thing the Dodgers aren't a base stealing ball club. They're last in the National League in stolen bases. Caught more than they've stolen. That's off the plate, and now Cologne, for a rare time tonight, finds himself behind in the count. I think you got to send uh, Gonzalez here and have the confidence of the catcher and Grandal who's having a, a nice season. 
Only the second three ball count of the night for Cologne. His first came against Kershaw before he struck him out. No lead at first. He's not going anywhere. Right. Rondahl hits it in the air to right. Granderson moves over. Another two out. As the deadline approaches, get up to the minute info on all the Mets trade news and rumors. Plus a complete breakdown of tonight's Mets Dodgers game on Mets Blog, presented by City, part of the SNY.TV blog network. Here's Puig, who was robbed of a hit by Lagares, a nice diving catch in left center in the second, then bounced into a double play in the fifth. Has a shorter lead at first base <laughs> as I can remember anybody taking since the 1999 League Championship Series when Kenny Rogers was pitching for the Mets and Andrew Jones kept his foot on first base. Like a little league lead, but right. no lead. Because Rogers had such a good pickoff move. That's definitely conservative. <laughs> you think? 0 2 to Puy. Side corner, Cologne got him looking. Fourth strikeout for Old Man River. Now Kershaw, 18 up and 18 down, tries to keep it going. Heston on June the 9th. Throwing a no hitter here at City Field for the Giants against the Mets. There's only been one perfect game thrown against the Mets in their history. That was Jim Bunning back in 1964 at Chase Stadium. The Dodgers have only had one perfect game in their history, and that was Sandy Koufax in 65 against the Cubs. There have been 22 perfect games, 23 if you count Don Larson's in the World Series. And that's what Kershaw did last year. The only base runner against him on an error. Tonight, no base runners at all. He went six perfect in that game as well. Randerson is over to bounced out to the right side both times. No hands in for a strike, and it's 0 2. Wicked electric hook starts at his head, ends up on the outside corner on the knees. 
And Granderson pulls one in the right field for the Mets' first base hit. On an 0-2 slider, Granderson breaks up the no-hitter in the perfect game. And the Mets set the tying run at first with nobody out. Boy, a pitch to waste. Just didn't break, did it, Ron? No, it, it, it just stayed straight. He wanted he wanted to throw it down and away bad to see if Granderson would fish. You know it's interesting because we haven't seen him in these first six plus innings throw back to back curveballs, and he had embarrassed him with a big one and then came back with the ball that didn't move. So now Kershaw will pitch out of the stretch for the first time today as he faces Ruben Tejada, and we'll see if the Mets try and make something happen here with Granderson at first. Tejada takes a strike. There it is. Might have been a little low, but your low ball hitter. And Curtis has been swinging the bat well. He's got an eight game hitting streak now. The show with that distinctive stretch where he takes an enormous breath with the hands up high. And Tejada dribbles one foul. I thought perhaps coming right off the hit, first time out of the stretch, maybe play hit and run, do something. Yeah. Just to try and put some pressure on. Now Felix Hernandez retains the most recent perfect game. There were three of them in that 2012 season, which was extraordinary. The only season in which there had ever been three perfect games. Oh, the corner, one and two to take. Yeah, just missed. Remember Philip Umber's perfect game. The ball got away from the catcher. He was thrown out at first base to save the perfect game. You're right, just missed with that key. That could have been the big play, but for Granderson's hit. And the ball on the right side for Tejada with two strikes. And the curveball down. Rondal does a nice job stopping it. Two and two. Kershaw from the stretch, too, Ronnie. Very quick home. Well, he's quick home because he doesn't really step. He just kind of lets gravity topple him over towards the plate. So he just keeps that foot extremely low and just places it in front of him. There's no leg kick. There's nothing. Just kind of leans and lets gravity take him towards the plate. There have been six stolen bases against Kershaw this year and 11 tries. Two and two to Tejada. And Ruben stays alive for fouling off that slider. Well, the Mets faced Kershaw three weeks ago in L.A. He gave up one run in seven innings in that game, and the Mets would end up winning that game in the ninth. He's trying to stick around in this game now, finally having garnered a base run. Cologne has certainly done his work to keep the Mets in it. There goes Granderson, and it's fouled off. I would love to see Curtis steal bases. He's a leadoff guy. He's something he hasn't done. He stole the two bases in that 18 inning game when he came in in the middle of the game and stole two bases. So he has the capability of still stealing bases. Eight steals on the year and 10 tries. Well, this has been the longest turn at bat against Kershaw tonight. Seventh pitch up coming to Tejada with Flores on deck. Started the night with a 10 game hitting streak, trying to keep that intact. Two two. Curveball struck him out. Nine strikeouts for Kershaw. He's fanned five of the last seven batters. When you look at curveballs, a lot of them are guys that pull down on the ball. It's different from Kershaw. I call it a casted curveball. He kind of casts it in the air. The seams start to catch, and then that's when it starts to break, and that's what makes it so difficult to hit. So one out and one on. Now Flores, who's grounded out and taking a call third strike, 0 for 2.
And I know they judge spin rates now on curveballs. But Kershaw seems to break more than anybody. He uses it very wisely too against the right handers. He comes over the top with a 12 to 6 break straight down and on the outside corner. And there, that curve had some plate. The off speed full Tejada. Now back. Well, when you go back and look at left handers that you've seen, Anybody had a curveball as good as Kershaw's? You know, I've heard of guys like Harold Score. I did not see Koufax pitch, uh, but you know, obviously we know he had one of the best curveballs ever. I can't remember anyone having a curveball like his because it's just so big and just keeps breaking. Um, the hitters just don't see it. Barry Zito is the guy that you think of in the last couple of decades as having a superior left handed curveball. He had a good curveball and certainly not. I think in the same league as Kershaw because of all the other pitches that Kershaw has reliever Mark Davis. That was a good curve. That was a great curveball. Giants Ken Daly. Was that a good curveball. Yes. There goes Granderson hit run play into shallow right. Three coming on and lands for a base hit. Granderson had to hold up thinking Quig might catch it. So he only gets to second base. But the Mets play hit a run and Flores picks up the second hit of the inning. And Quig really misplayed this. He he stutter steps. Well, he never reacted. He just he, he missed it right. He just kind of came in and he stopped and then he came and then he charged again. Well, you see the fake too by the second baseman Hernandez. I wonder if that did anything. Wouldn't think so with the veteran. So the Mets get a runner in a scoring position for the first time tonight. And now John Mayberry hitting cleanup against Kershaw has struck out and hit a dribbler that Rondell threw him out on. First and second and one out. One nothing Dodgers seventh inning. And Mayberry takes a strike. Well he's been pounding Mayberry in. I mean you've used your third at bat against him. You've seen him and you Gosh, do you want to swing at the curveball or do you want to get a first pitch fastball and take a swing at it? I mean, to each his own. Mayberry had a double against Kershaw in Los Angeles and scored the only Mets run against Clayton in that game. And that was a ball in that he hit down the left field line. Granderson at second, Flores at first, and one out. Eric Campbell on deck. Curveball for the foul. Nothing at two. Oh, come on up. Manny Gonzalez, third base umpire, booted that one. Hardest working inning so far for Kershaw. He was perfect through six. He's given up a couple of hits here in the seventh. Throwing 81 pitches through seven innings. Oh. Staying loose. Mets first stab at a run. One, two. Curveball struck him out. That's 10 for Kershaw, his third straight double digit strikeout game. Well, slider down and in, and then came back with the curveball into dirt. And Mayberry chases it. Ninth time this year Kershaw has struck out in double figures. He began the night leading the National League in strikeouts. And he has really turned it up a notch. Struck out six of the last nine batters. See how he uses that over the top curve, Gary, to get the hitters out in front, the right hand hitters. So now it's Campbell who, before this inning, came the closest to reaching base, struck out on a pitch in the dirt, and almost beat the play at first base. He's also flying to right 0 for 2. Two on and two out. And Campbell swinging at the cutter, nothing and one. Good down cutter. Boy, I'll say it's a what a weapon. 
Yep. This is just uh, what I mentioned earlier, warming up how low in the strike zone he was. That is a, almost an unhittable pitch. I'll never say unhittable. Just did. Curveball bounced slowly. Rollins on the charge. It comes up for a nice lane. He throws out Campbell. And Kershaw is able to sidestep his first trouble of the night. Let's get their first two hits, but strand them. One nothing Dodgers going to the eighth. He had his career to play all over. He would have swung more. He had 1,210 walks. He says nobody said nobody remembered them. The Hall of Fame remembered some. Hall of Fame. I 269 <laughs> lifetime hitter with those walks. 366 lifetime on base. I totally concur with Pee Wee, and I knew Pee Wee well. He used to be worked for um, Louisville Slugger, and he come back in the minor league camps. He was such a wonderful man. A gentleman. P.K. Hernandez pops one up. Easy for Flores. He reached the captain of the Boys of Summer. Great Dodger teams of the 40s and 50s. Number one and did his part to, to ease the tension that surrounded Jackie Robinson as well. He was a Southern guy who had to. Really reach within him yeah. to uh, to welcome Jackie and, and he did put his arm around him in Cincinnati when the fans were hooting at him. Jimmy Rollins swings through the fastball. It's interesting what Keith said and in our day when we started to play in the minor leagues, all the great ex players used to work for the bat companies, glove companies, um, or, or whatever if they weren't coaches or managers. Frank Torrey was with Rollins when I was in the minor leagues. There's Gil Martin up in the bullpen. But Pee Wee would talk Gary in the minor leagues when I was a nobody, you know, and would come up. I'm sure he knew I was a prospect. He came out on his way to talk to me, and I'm an 18 year old kid. Rollins, who homeward for the only run of this game, pops this one up, and Campbell is there for the second out. Let's check in with the studio. Kareth Burke has another game break.
Randall Grichik also homer in that game for the Cardinals, who won their 60th game of the year last night, most in the majors. Who's off Chris Young? There's Kershaw, who singled and struck out tonight. Colon trying to get through eight for the first time this year. He went seven and two thirds against the Orioles, May 5th, and a three to two win. And now trying to get through eight for the first time. <laughs> He is due to bat fourth when the Mets come up in the bottom of the eighth against Kershaw. Cologne went eight innings five times last year. Kershaw, meanwhile, has thrown 81 pitches through seven. And he flies this one out to center, and Ligaris is there. So Cologne with a one, two, three, eighth. Gets through eight for the first time this season, but the Mets down a run. Prepares to deliver their first child. The Dodgers rotation in complete flux beyond Kershaw. Jonathan Neese goes tomorrow night for the Mets trying to keep alive his terrific run. Matt Harvey Saturday and then Jacob DeGrom Sunday. It's the story tonight though has been Clayton Kershaw. Well he had a perfect game through through six. 18 up 18 down. And you can see just totally befuddling Met hitters. Complete command. And these are all the strikeouts in there. It's plenty, about 10 of them. 10 strikeouts, no walks. Last three starts now. He has struck out 37 and walked none. Due to Lagaris and Recker will try and break through against Kershaw in the eighth. The way Kershaw has now thrown 27 consecutive scoreless innings. Granky at 43 and two thirds right now, trying to run down Will Hershiser's all time record. Duda has struck out twice tonight, and he goes after the first pitch cutter, nothing and one. So Frankie is not going to pitch tomorrow. There's a possibility he could be back here to pitch Saturday or Sunday, depending on when his wife gives birth. And of course, you know that will be part of history if he does, as he tries to chase down Hershiser, who's here tonight doing Dodger TV. Dodgers go back home on Sunday night, day off Monday. Might make more sense for yes. him to leave him out there, but we'll see. It's going to be probably totally up to Zach's preference what he wants to do. They can put him on the paternity list tomorrow and replace him on the roster for three days. So they might go to their long man, Ian Thomas, to pitch tomorrow. They've got a rookie, Zach Lee, who might pitch Saturday. Brett Anderson, whose Achilles was bothering him, warmed up before the game. He might go Sunday, but it's all up in the air right now. Duda hits one toward the middle. That's a base hit. Peterson gets it in, holds Duda to a single, so the Mets have their third hit off Kershaw, and they get the leadoff man on in the eighth. 
Same pitch he tried to throw to Granison. He tried to throw to Duda. Ahead in the count. Well, he was 0 and 2 on Granderson. He was 0 and 2 on Duda. Look at reaction here. First time he got mad at himself. He knew he made a mistake. Stupid. He is just beating himself up there. Insane. I mean, he made the same mistake. So the Mets are the tying run aboard. Juan Lagares has flied out and struck out 0 for 2, and he's going to try and sacrifice and takes the pitch low for ball one. Well, he squared around, and first baseman Adrian Gonzalez did not move. Well, maybe that's a clue for where you should bunt. Mm -hmm. Maybe beat it out. Anthony Recker on deck, then the pitcher's spot. That's uh, Michael Kadire in the dugout. Is he available to pinch it? We think so, but I don't know. And he's picked off. Duda is picked off. Hit and run. Absolutely inexcusable. You know what I think happened here, Gary? And it's inexcusable. I think Terry put the hit and run on. And when the hit runs on, what makes it inexcusable is you never get picked off. Duda's not going to steal a base. So. I have to ask Terry about that one. One three six one on the caught stealing. Kershaw making the tag, and that really hurts. Lagara sits one right at the second baseman, and Hernandez throws him out two away. And I like the hit and run call because you've got a guy out there that's dominating, dominating, and one of the best pitchers in the game. And you've got to try to make something happen. But you can't get picked off. No, oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can't get picked off, and I don't think you even have to ask Terry. His reaction looking down tells you all you need to know what that play was. Now Wrecker with two out and nobody on. Daniel Murphy has come out on deck to pinch hit, so that might be the answer about Michael Kadire's availability. Sandy Alderson said today that Kadire probably is going to go on the disabled list tomorrow. And that his knee is worse today than it had been the last few days, despite taking that new anti inflammatory, which apparently made him somewhat lightheaded. So the Mets have been playing pretty much a man short the last few days. And the fact that Kadir is not on deck tells you everything you need to know. There are uh, when you feel someone says they're lightheaded on anti inflams it's like indecent those high potent anti inflams they can disor they can uh, disorient you. Record lays off the curveball one and two. So familiar getting ready in the Mets bullpen he'll probably be in only if the Mets were able to tie it. John Gilmar and otherwise. Top of the Dodger batting order coming up on the top of the night. That's a curveball in the dirt there by Kershaw. He hasn't doubled up, or I haven't seen him double up yet. Let's see if he does it here with the curveball. 90 pitches for the night. Just in complete command. No walks, 10 strikeouts, three singles, all three of them in the last two innings. One, two to record. Lays off the fastball, two and two. Now the curveball bounced to third. Turner makes the throw. Side retire. An inning that started promisingly for the Mets, much to the dismay of Kershaw giving up the hit to Duda, turned very quickly. Duda gets picked off, and Terry Collins cannot believe what he just saw.
Toyota dealer, Toyota Let's Go Places by Optimum, presenting Mets games in crystal clear HD and by Astoria Bank. At Astoria Bank, the difference is wanting to make a difference. Visit AstoriaBank.com. Sean Gilmartin on to pitch in the top of the ninth. Jock Peterson leads off and takes a breaking ball for a strike. That's one thing that Gilmartin's been able to do. If he doesn't pitch a lot, but when he comes in, he's able to throw those breaking pitches for strikes. Last pitch to the 18 inning game on Sunday and went a season high three innings, allowing no runs, one hit, and striking out four Cardinals. Well, Cologne was not batted for in the bottom of the eighth. He could have come out to pitch the ninth at 88 pitches. Surprised that, uh, well, you know, what might be one of those cases where the 42 year old just done. But what an effort. No down to the left side. Diving Campbell. Does he have time? No. And he throws it away to boot, but it takes a good care of right back to Duda. And Peterson's aboard. Might have been one Campbell would have been better off letting go. Well, nice play stretching out and just overthrew it here. It'll be an infield hit for Peterson, who's going to beat it anyway. And Tejada had it completely. I mean, I know they say the third baseman is supposed to take anything he can, but there's a limit to that. But there's an another problem with the shift. You've got the third baseman so far over there that he's diving for plays that are right to the shortstop. So the Dodgers with a chance for an insurance run in the ninth. Justin Turner's 0 for 3. You got Gonzalez and Ethier, two left hand batters behind him, so they may ask Turner to swing away. And he was set to, and he takes ball one. Well, he's got a serious beard working there. Everything's working for him. <laughs> and that's that's some that takes some, uh, some some gardening around there. That's some Jeremiah Johnson, Dan Haggerty look. Get out the trim. Had a good time here. He did. He's having a better time there. Well, we always said on the air when he was here as a Met, he knew how to play the game. It's a good base runner. Doesn't can play all the infield positions uh, outside of. He did play a little first base. An emergency. He he's he's a solid player. Yeah, not a great defender at any position. Didn't have much range, but. He was adequate, but he's become a better hitter as he's gotten more opportunity. And he has been very outspoken about the strides that he made listening to Marlon Byrd's theories on hitting, getting the ball out front more. Now looking to push a bunt, and he fouls an off one too. Now that's smart to play for a run here. Give uh, your pitcher some breathing room. Does it make less sense though when you have left hand hitters up against Gil Martin? Well, if you had asked me last year with Gonzalez, I would have said yes, but he's hitting lefties a little better this year. Yeah. And Gil Martin's more effective against right handers anyway. He's developed a change up. Remember in spring training, he was just a curveball, fastball pitcher. He's got a nice little change up now. It's very effective against the right handers. Peterson at first and nobody out. No walks, four strikeouts, a hit batsman, and a Jimmy Rollins home run. Some things just never change. Coming up tonight, Geico Sports Night, eight days from the trading deadline. Lou Lamorello leaves the Devils, going to be the GM of the Maple Leafs. And we're on Deflate Gate. Do we need to hear more on Deflate Gate? Not me personally. Okay. We'll be on Geico Sports Night. Line to center, that's in for a base hit. Peterson stops at second, so back to back hits against Gilmartin to start at the top of the night. Kind of telegraphed that changeup. And that's something he hasn't done, but right here, a little alteration in his delivery on the change. And you can definitely see that as a hitter. You always want to disguise your pitches, and the only way you disguise your pitches is to have the same point of release, same motion, same arm speed. 
And, and the changeup is not as effective, Keith, against a hitter like Turner who protects so well with two strikes. Carlos Torres up in the Mets bullpen. Gonzalez two for three tonight. Oh, that was off that high breaking ball. You saw the reaction. Gonzalez had the same reaction that I had in the booth. <laughs> oh, I've been there. It was a hanging breaking ball that he missed. Pittsburgh's jumped out in front big time on Washington. Another thing about Adrian Gonzalez, he has a very, very, very good eye at the plate. Very disciplined hitter, doesn't swing at a lot of bad pitches. Ronnie, watching those last two pitches, when you hang a slider, is it almost inevitable you're going to overthrow the next one? Yeah, absolutely, because uh, you don't have the feel on that first one, so you want to make sure the next one you really spin it. It's going to be out of the strike zone nine times out of ten. That one's pulled through the hole for a base hit. Peterson, the third, will be held up there. And the Dodgers have the bases loaded and nobody out. Third hit of the night for Adrian Gonzalez, and the Dodgers poised to add to their lead. Well, just good hitting. Didn't swing in any of the bad breaking balls. Then he gets one. And there you go. Nice night for. Mr. Gonzalez, three for four. So bases loaded, nobody out. Andre Ethier due up, but they're going to send up Alice Guerrero as a pinch hitter. And that'll give Terry Collins his cue to bring in the right hander Carlos Torres to face Guerrero. So we might see Carl Crawford as a pinch hitter instead. We'll see. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. Respond with the right hand, and the Dodgers respond with the switch inning. Alberto Cayaspo will face Carlos Torres. Well, Carlos Torres, the last time he pitched, you can say this about a lot of the Mets pitchers, was in that 18 inning game where he pitched the last two innings, got the win. 
Kayaspo as a pinch hitter this year, six for 25. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. That moment will live for the rest of the night at least. So here's Kayaspo trying to break this game up. Dodgers up 1 nothing in the ninth. Mets have to bring the infield in. Peterson at third, Turner at second, Gonzalez at first, and nobody out. Kayaspo acquired from the Braves earlier this year in the deal that sent Juan Uribe to Atlanta. Switch hitter hitting 281 from the left side of the plate. So Sean Gilmartin faces three batters, gives up three hits, and leaves with the bases full. Another switch hitter, Yasmani Grandal on deck. And Torres promptly falls behind Kayaspo 2 0. Torres and his warm up pitches had a real difficult time throwing any strikes, and he's continued here in real play. Two balls in a row. And a check swing. Did he go? He did not. And now it's three of them. And it is almost with the call of third. And I don't believe he went. No, well, time to throw a strike. It would be nice. And he missed badly for ball four and a force in a run, and it's two nothing Los Angeles. A four pitch bases loaded walk. Peterson comes in, and the Dodgers have their insurance run, and now poised for a whole lot more. Here's Grandal, who's one for three on the day. Turner now at third, Gonzalez at second, Tiasco at first. And that's five in a row out of the strike zone for Carlos Torres. And that'll get him a visit from record. Well, the Mets' task was steep enough. It is even steeper now, down at least two runs when Kershaw takes them out for the bottom of the ninth. Danny Watson sees that his pitcher has lost a bit, so he's going to go out there and try to straighten them out. Um, when relievers come in, I always try to watch them throw because sometimes you can get a feel as if they use a pitch more than others, maybe they're going to use that as their first pitch. And he really had trouble getting the ball even close to the catcher in his warm ups. And, and Carlos is fairly predictable. Yeah. And there you see tomorrow night's ball game. Derek, can I do that for you? Go right ahead. Six o'clock, the coverage begins on SNY. Seven o'clock game. Tune in. You did that so well. Thank you. Very nice. That oh, backstop! It comes right back to Torres, though, and the runners will stay put. Wow. It's like a circus. There was only one other ballpark, Ronnie, when we played that you could have something like this, and that was Wrigley Field. Field. Yep. You never knew how it would bounce off the off the brick. Well, good base running by Turner to realize it. Having played in this ballpark as much as Justin has, that certainly helped him. The problem with that is that Turner is trying to go, and that starts to get everyone on the bases going. So good job by all the base runners. Yeah, Adrian Gonzalez was halfway to third base and really had to scramble to get back. Meanwhile, six in a row out of the strike zone, and that one missing worse than any. And Grandal swinging it at the 2 0 pitch and fouls it off. And that throws a sarcastic roar from. The city field faithful. That's the equivalent when the goalie has let a, a lot of shots in the net and he finally makes a save, right? At the garden. <laughs> There's the good cutter from Torres and he gets even on Grandal. Yasiel Puig waiting on deck. 2 2. And he struck him out. So Torres bounces back to strike out Grandal for the first out of the inning. 
I don't think he threw him a strike the entire time, but Grindal kept jumping in at that cutter. Pirates just tacked on two in the bottom of the seventh. They lead the Nationals 6 1 going to the eighth. And that's good news for the Mets. Meanwhile, Fleeg steps in with the bases loaded and one out. Fleeg one for three today. Took a call third strike from Colonna's last time up. Bartolo was very, very solid for eight innings tonight. And there's Fleeg chasing the curveball, nothing in one. Well, this was the scouting report on Fleeg. Went over and talked to the Dodger. TV is Alex Torres up in the bullpen, uh, but Hershiser, Oral Hershiser, and no more, no more Garcia Parra, and they said that Puig has just been chasing bad breaking balls, can't handle the outside corner. Flies this one out to right, that'll get a run home. Tagging it third is Turner. Granderson makes the catch. Turner walks on in. Over to third goes Gonzalez. Sacrifice flat for Puig makes it three nothing LA. Good hitting and a ball away. All she needs a fly ball. Piece of cake for Turner. You can just keep that thing in second gear, not to exert too much energy, consume too much. So two out runners at the corners, and now Kike Hernandez, who is 0 for 3 tonight. Well, down three at least. To Kershaw, who's going to be bidding for a complete game shutout. That's will have the pitcher spot Granderson and Tejada do up. Going for his second complete game shutout. Three starts. Shutout the Phillies. Two starts back up. Now remember, in I think the horses have left the barn. In St. Louis, they did it. They startled me that first game, and then they did it in the second inning. Hernandez tops one foul. I mean, these string of games if Cope if wow, it's funny. I almost said Koufax. If Kershaw closes it out, you're talking about three games that he started, no runs given up, no walks, double digit strikeouts. Hernandez strikes out to end the inning, but the Dodgers post two insurance runs and hand it off to Kershaw, who's been trying to complete the shutout at the bottom of the ninth.
working on a string of 28 consecutive scoreless innings tries to complete the task tonight. We got Granky who's trying to run down Oral Hershiser's record of 59. He could do that in his, his next two starts. You got Kershaw sticking up behind him 28 straight scoreless innings. What a monumental Whoa. accomplishment these two are putting together. Meanwhile Kershaw his last three starts including this one 25 innings 14 hits no walks 37 strikeouts. Daniel Murphy will pinch hit to start at the bottom of the night. And Murph takes a fastball for a strike. He pitches a game I'm unfamiliar with. He's been good. Murph had a couple of hits yesterday in Washington. Got the night off tonight. No longer. And he takes the curveball down for ball one. Curtis Granderson, who had the first man hit in this game in the seventh inning, is on deck. And then Ruben Tejada. If anybody gets on, Wilmer Flores. Ooh, still throwing hard. You can hear the sound of the Grandal's mitt up here in the booth. One, two. And Murph lays off the cutter. Two balls, two strikes. Kenley Jansen will stay ready in the Dodger bullpen just in case. Kershaw bidding for a second complete shutout, complete game shutout in his last three starts. And the 11th of his career. This is with a curveball, and he runs the count full to Murphy. Mets about the leadoff man on each of the last two innings. Kershaw retired the first 18 tonight before Granderson let off the seventh with a hit. Mets would get two hits in the seventh, leave them stranded. They got a leadoff hit from Duda in the eighth, but he was picked off by Kershaw. And that's what Kershaw has done these last three starts. 3 2 to Murphy. And he fouls it off. The last time Kershaw gave up a run, it was the last time he faced the Mets in the fourth inning back on July 3rd. Since then, 28 straight scoreless. I don't think you'll see a different pitch with a 3 0 lead, 3 2. It's going to just challenge Murph. And Murphy with the half swing able to somehow foul it off. Kershaw threw 101 pitches his last start in, in Washington. This will be his 100th pitch of this game. And Murphy hammers one to second. Hernandez throws him out one away. Well, it's rare you get a pitcher with a three to one strike to ball ratio. Last time we used to see that all the time was Johan Santana used to do that in his prime. The shutout he threw. Two starts ago against the Phillies, he threw 123 pitches in that ball game. He had six complete games last year, two shutouts. In fact, if he gets a shutout tonight, it'll be the fifth straight season he's had multiple shutouts. Well, there's the first hit of the ball game after 18 up and 18 down. Granderson led off and handled like a bold pro. Kers Kershaw just. Dusted it off. He was much more visibly upset after Duda's hit on a similar pick. Let's see if he throws an 0-2 cutter again. If he tries to execute it properly this time. But Tejada on deck. It's in danger of being shut out for the 11th time this year. And Granderson tries to lay off, but he went around strike three. And Grandel slaps the tag on him. Two down. 11 strikeouts for Clayton Kershaw. That's what he wanted to do in the top of the seventh. That pitch right there. Yes. A very good run. Absolutely. And so the Mets are down to their final out. The Dodgers have already had 14 shutouts this year. And Kershaw trying to do it by himself for the second time. Tejada has a 10 game hitting streak on the line. And Ruben hits a broken back rounder. Justin Turner fields it. And that'll do it. A three hit shutout for Clayton Kershaw.
who's now thrown 29 consecutive scoreless innings, his second shutout of the season, the 11th of his career, and the Dodgers take the opener of the series 3 0. Uh, it's a shame because Bartolo Colon pitched one of his best games that he's pitched all season long, eight innings with one hit, but the Mets tonight were just overmatched by Mr. Kershaw. And a game where really only one run was going to be the difference, and of course, Jimmy Rollins, a home run, his 31st. Home run against the Mets in his long illustrious career. That was the game breaker right there. That was in the third inning. Kershaw did not walk a batter. He struck out 11. He's fanned 38 batters and walked none in his last three starts. He's thrown 29 consecutive scoreless innings, continuing to reestablish himself as the best pitcher in baseball. And he certainly was that tonight. Perfect through six, winds up with a three hit shutout. Dodgers win it 3 0. We'll come back with more from City Field in just a moment.